Hello guys, this is Dr. Jumranda. Welcome to the video on vascular disease of the kidney part 2. In this video, we are going to see in detail about thrombotic microangiopathy and the renal artery stenosis. First about thrombotic microangiopathy, a microvascular thrombosis. These diseases are uniquely have a common triad, microangiopathy, hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia and renal failure. There are two forms of thrombotic microangiopathies, primary forms and secondary forms. Primary forms occurs with a known etiology. Secondary forms develop in the background of other diseases without well-defined etiology. The primary TMA is of four types, Shiga toxin mediated HUS, hemolytic uremic syndrome, a typical HVS are complement mediated HVS, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, drug mediated TMA. The secondary TMA is due to many diseases like malignant hypertension, scleroderma, pregnancy, chemotherapy, antiphospholipid lipid antibody syndrome, transplant rejection. Coming to the primary forms in detail, Shiga toxin mediated HVS. It is usually acquired due to infection by Shiga toxin producing E. coli, Shigella dysentery type 1. Atypical HVS or complement mediated HVS is inherited and also acquired. Two types are there. Inherited atypical HUS is due to genetic abnormalities in the complement regulatory pathway. Acquired atypical HUS is due to acquired autoantibodies which is very rare. TTP that is thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura again is of two types inherited and acquired. Inherited TTP is rare and due to inherited deficiency of ADAMTS that is Adam's 13 protein. Acquired TTP is relatively common and due to ADAMTS that is Adam's 13 deficiency due to autoantibodies. Here we can see the pathogenesis of each one. First is Shiga toxin mediated hemolytic uremic syndrome. When the Shiga like toxin really Released from the E. coli bacterial infection, the B cell will be activated to plasma cells and it will produce antibodies against the Shiga toxin. Toxin that is the antigen combined with antibody to produce antigen and antibody complex in the circulation. The complex bind to the endothelium in tunica intima. This activates the leukocytes in the blood circulation and also activate the complement system causes endothelial injury. This in turn activate platelets to aggregate to form thrombus. This makes the RBC stuck within the insoluble fibrin meshwork. Coming to the pathogenesis of complement mediated HUS. There are inhibitors for the complement activation like factor H, I and CD46. These are to regulate the alternative pathway of complement system. When they are mutated or destroyed, there will be abnormal activation of complement pathway, releases membrane attack complex and cause endothelial injury. Then coming to the pathogenesis of DT. Adams 13 is a protein which helps in regulation of 1 mg factor synthesis. Usually, it cleans the 1 mg factor multimers and deactivates its function. When there is deficiency of Adams 13 protein due to inherited mutations or destruction by autoantibodies, the multimer form of 1 mg factor which remains active and deactivates the platelets to form thrombus. This consumes more platelets and causes thrombocytopenia. This thrombotic events leads to formation of microthrombi in the glomerular capillary and small intertubular blood vessels and leads to glomerular sclerosis finally ends in renal failure. In the glomeruli, we can see peculiar changes like marked thickening of the capillaries and splitting early duplication of glomerular basement membrane. You can see the same so-called double contours or tram tracks in the capillary basement membrane. When the RBCs are trapped in the fibrin, they are fragmented and produce helmet cells, cystocytes, blister cells then resulting in microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Coming to the clinical features of typical Shiga toxin mediated HUS are HUS D plus or HUS diarrhea associated. It is sudden in onset usually after a prodromal GI symptom or diarrhea or flu-like symptoms. We can also get bleeding manifestations like hematemesis and melanoma. 
Vagina. Also, severe oliguria, hematuria, and prominent neurological changes may see. This type of HUS D plus is a major cause of acute renal injury in children. The complement mediated HUS or the atypical HUS or HUS not associated with diarrhea that is D minus is also sudden in onset usually occurs without diarrhea. Plasma exchange and antibody to the membrane attack complex are now developed as treatment of choice. The TTP that is thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura is also sudden in onset mainly involves the central nervous system first then kidneys. The kidneys are usually commonly involved than the previous thrombotic microangiopathies. It has a rapid fatal outcome. Plasma exchange that replaces Adam's protein protein is a promising treatment for TTP. Coming to a small and last topic of vascular diseases of the kidney, renal artery stenosis. We saw that the primary hypertension leads to renal ischemia and renal failure. The same way, vice versa, the renal ischemia may due to renal artery stenosis that can lead to hypertension. This is one example of secondary hypertension and it is due to increased renin production. The common cause of renal artery stenosis is narrowing of the renal artery due to atheromatous plaques. This is more common and affect the men than women at their old age also most commonly associated with diabetes mellitus. The second most common cause of renal artery stenosis is fibromuscular dysplasia affecting tunica media of the arteries. This genetic defect affects women than men mostly at their third to fourth decade. The characteristics of renal artery stenosis are grossly the kidneys are small in size, there will be crowding of glomeruli, atrophic tubules, interstitial fibrosis and focal inflammation as like other vascular diseases of the kidney. There will be elevated plasma renin levels. The renal scans including contrast arteriography and intravenous pilography are the gold standard investigations for renal artery stenosis. Surgical removal of the affected area with ligation anastomosis or stents are the treatment of choice. Thank you for your patient listening.